Section 1 of Beautiful Thoughts from George MacDonald. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Beautiful Thoughts by George MacDonald and Elizabeth W. Dougal. Section 1. January and February. January 1st. Does God care to paint the sky of an evening, that a few of his children might see it, and get just a hope, just an aspiration, out of its passing green and gold and purple and red? And should I think my day's labor lost, if it work no visible salvation in the earth? January 2nd He who is faithful over a few things is a lord over cities. It does not matter whether you preach in Westminster Abbey or teach a ragged class, so you be faithful. The faithfulness is all. January 3rd It is better to be trusted than to be loved. January 4th Tis easy to destroy. God only makes. January 5th. The deepest, purest love of a woman has its wellspring in him. Our longing desires can no more exhaust the fullness of the treasures of the Godhead than our imagination can touch their measures. January 6th. Love which will yield to prayer is imperfect and poor nor is it then the love that yields but its alloy january seventh all truth is lovely january eighth let us think and care ever so little about god we do not therefore exist without him january ninth God has an especial tenderness of love towards thee, for that thou art in the dark and hast no light. January 10th I think, my dear, death has two sides to it, one sunny and one dark, as this round earth is every day half sunny and half dark. We on the dark side call the mystery death. They on the other side, looking down in light, Wait the glad birth with other tears than ours. January 11th Fold the arms of thy faith and wait in quietness until light goes up in thy darkness. Fold the arms of thy faith, I say, but not of thy action. Bethink thee of something that thou oughtest to do and go and do it, if it be but the sweeping of a room. Heed not thy feelings, but do thy work. January 12th God can fill the emptiest heart. January 13th Christianity does not mean what you think or what I think concerning Christ, but what is of Christ in us. January 14th Become thou pure in heart, and thou shalt see God, whose vision alone is life. January 15th None but God can read in a woman what she really is. January 16th What we call evil is the only and best shape which for the person and his condition at the time could be assumed by the best good. January 17th If you would only ask what God would have you to do, you would soon find your confidence growing. January 18th Strive to be what God would have you be, nor hold anything else worth thy care. January 19th God be with thee, he is with thee, only my prayer is that thou mayest know it. January 20th It is the human we love in each other, 
and the human is Christ. January 21st Come to me, shine in me, Master, and I care not for river or tree. Care not for sorrow or crying, if only thou shine in me. January 22nd The strength of a woman is as needful to her womanhood as the strength of the man to his manhood, and a woman is just as strong as she will be. January 23rd No arguing will convince you of a god, but let him once come in, and all argument will be tenfold useless to convince you that there is no god. January 24th How is the work of the world to be done if we take no thought? We are nowhere told not to take thought. We must take thought. What, then, are we to take thought about? Why, about our work. What are we not to take thought about? Why, about our life. The one is our business, the other is God's. January 25th God is in no haste, and if I do what I may in earnest, I need not mourn if I work no great work on the earth. January 26th Lord, I have laid my heart upon thy altar, but cannot get the wood to burn. It hardly flares, ere it begins to falter, and to the dark returns. Tis all I have, smoke, failure, foiled endeavor, coldness and doubt, and palsied lack. Such as I have, I send thee, perfect giver, send thou thy lightning back. January 27th To trust God changes the atmosphere surrounding mystery and seeming contradiction from one of pain and fear to one of hope. January 28th If a man desire God, he cannot help knowing enough of him to be capable of learning more. January 29th To know God is life. January 30th God does all that can be done for even the worst of men to help them to believe in Christ. January 31st Hurt as it may, love on, love forever, love for love's sake like the Father above, but for whose brave-hearted Son we had never known the sweet hurt of the sorrowful love. February February 1st Come to us above the storm, ever shines the blue. Come to us, beyond its form, ever lies the true. February 2nd Afflictions are but the shadows of God's wings. February 3rd Do not talk about the lantern that holds the lamp, but make haste to uncover the light and let it shine. February 4th I find that the doing of the will of God leaves me no time to be disputing about his plans. February 5th We can never be at peace till we have performed the highest duty of all, till we have risen and gone to our Father. February 6th God sees thee through all the gloom through which thou canst not see him. February 7th It has been well said that no man ever sank under the burden of the day. It is when tomorrow's burden is added to today's that the weight is more than a man can bear. February 8th Not what I think, but what thou art makes sure. February 9th 
A man's labors must pass like the sunrises and sunsets of the world. The next thing, not the last, must be his care. February 10th All the doors that lead inward to the secret place of the Most High are doors outward, out of self, out of smallness, out of wrong. February 11th The lightning and thunder, they go and they come, but the stars and the stillness are always at home. February 12th What is my next duty? No one can answer that question but yourself. Is there nothing you know you neglect? Ah, then, responded she, I suppose it is something very commonplace which will make life more dreary than ever. That cannot help me. It will, if it be as dreary as reading the newspaper to an old deaf aunt. It will soon lead you to something more. Your duty will begin to comfort you at once, but it will at length open the unknown fountains of life in your heart. February 13th The performance of small duties, yes, even of the smallest, will do more to give temporary repose, will act more as healthful anodynes than the greatest joys that can come to us from any other quarter. February 14th Work on, one day beyond all thought of praise. A sunny joy will crown thee with its rays, no other than thy need, thy recompense. February 15th Because our God is so free from stain, so loving, so unselfish, so good, so altogether what he wants us to be, so holy, therefore, all his works declare him in beauty. His fingers can touch nothing but to mold it into loveliness. February 16th Hark, hark, a voice amid the quiet intents. It is thy duty waiting thee without. February 17th To do as God does is to receive God. To do a service to one of his children is to receive the Father. February 18th The man that feareth, Lord, to doubt, in that fear doubteth thee. February 19th Life and religion are one, or neither is anything. February 20th Whoever gives a cup of cold water to a little one refreshes the heart of the Father. February 21st It is because God is perfect that we are required to be perfect. February 22nd Nothing is required of man that is not first in God. February 23rd I think that nothing made is lost, that not a moon has ever shone, that not a cloud my eyes hath crossed, but to my soul is gone, that all the lost years garnered lie in this thy casket, my dim soul, and thou wilt once the key apply and show the shining hole. February 24th to understand the words of our Lord is the business of life. February 25th What is the kingdom of Christ? A rule of love, of truth, a rule of service. The king is the chief servant in it. February 26th As soon as ever a service is done for the honor and not for the service sake, the doer is at that moment outside of the kingdom. February 27th Lord, thou hast much to make me yet, a feeble infant still. 
Thy thoughts, Lord, in my bosom set, fulfill me of thy will. February 28th Not every storm that climbeth heavenward overwhelms the earth. End of section 1 Read by Shelley Weingart, March 2024, Wareham, Massachusetts. Section 2 of Beautiful Thoughts from George MacDonald. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Beautiful Thoughts by George MacDonald and Elizabeth W. Dougal. Section 2. March and April. March 1st. Of noise alone is born the inward sense, of silence, and from action springs alone, the inward knowledge of true love and faith. March 2nd. The rejoicing in heaven is greatest over the sheep that has wandered the farthest, perhaps was born on the wild hillside and not in the fold at all. March 3rd. Jesus gives himself to us. Shall we not give ourselves to him? Shall we not give ourselves to each other whom he loves? March 4th We do not draw back for that we are unworthy, nor even for that we are hard-hearted and care not for the good. The perfection of his relation to us swallows up all our imperfections. March 5th. Life is not a series of chances with a few providences sprinkled between to keep up a justly failing belief, but one providence of God. March 6th. I think thou, Lord, wilt heal me too, whate'er the needful cure. The great best only thou wilt do, and hoping I endure. March 7th. Our Lord's arguments are for the presentation of the truth, and the truth carries its own conviction to him who is able to receive it. March 8th. Obedience is as divine as will. Service is as divine as rule. How? Because they are one in their nature. They are both a doing of the truth. March 9th. We are perfect in faith when we can come to God in the utter dearth of our feelings and our desires, without a glow or an aspiration, with the weight of failures, neglects, and wandering forgetfulness, and say to him, Thou art my refuge, because thou art my home. March 10. Weep if thou wilt, but weep not all too long, or weep and work, for work will lead to song. March 11th. Nothing is inexorable but love. March 12th. To see a truth, to know what it is, to understand it, and to love it are all one. March 13th. Let us have grace to serve our God with divine fear, not with the fear that cringes and craves, but with the bowing down of all thoughts, all delights, all loves, before him who is the life of them all and who will have them all pure. March 14th. It is not love that grants a boon unwillingly. Still less is it love that answers a prayer to the wrong and hurt of him who prays. March 15th. God who has made us can never be far from any man who draws the breath of life. Nay, must be in him, not necessarily in his heart, as we say, but still in him. 
March 16th. May not then one day some terrible convulsion from the center of his being, some fearful earthquake from the hidden gulfs in his nature, shake such a man so that through all the deafness of his death the voice of the spirit may be faintly heard, the still small voice that comes after the tempest and the earthquake? March 17th. God requires of us that we should do him no injustice. March 18th. Dome up, O heaven, yet higher o'er my head. Back, back, horizon, widen out my world. Rush in, O infinite sea of the unknown. For though he slay me, I will trust in God. March 19th. To men who are not simple, simple words are the most inexplicable of riddles. March 20th. It is the nature of God so terribly pure that it destroys all that is not as pure as fire, which demands like purity in our worship. It is not that the fire will burn us if we do not worship thus, but that the fire will burn us until we worship thus. March 21st The true revelation arouses the desire to know more by the truth of its incompleteness. March 22nd Whatever belonging to the region of thought and feeling is uttered in words is of necessity uttered imperfectly. March 23rd. Be bounteous in thy faith, for not misspent is confidence unto the Father lent. March 24th. Words for their full meaning depend upon their source, the person who speaks them. So the words of God cannot mean just the same as the words of man. March 25th. Troubled soul, thou art not bound to feel, but thou art bound to arise. God loves thee whether thou feelest or not. March 26th. Try not to feel good when thou art not good, but cry to him who is good. March 27th. Every uplifting of the heart is a looking up to the Father. March 28th. Spiritual pride springs from supposed success in the high aim. With attainment comes humility. March 29th. To be something to God is not that praise enough? March 30th. To be a thing God cares for and would have complete for himself because it is worth caring for, is not that life enough? March 31st. The true self is that which can look Jesus in the face and say, My Lord. April. April 1st. Beauty doth not pass away. Her form departs not, though her body dies. Secure beneath the earth, the snowdrop lies, waiting the spring's young resurrection day. April 2nd God gives himself to us, though we know it not. April 3rd Forgiveness can never be indifference. April 4th. If we are bound to search after what our Lord means, and he speaks that we may understand, we are at least equally bound to refuse any interpretation which seems to us unlike him, unworthy of him. April 5th. God loves where he cannot yet forgive. 
where forgiveness in the full sense is as yet simply impossible, because that which lies between us has not begun to yield to the besom of his holy destruction. April 6th Whatever a good word means as used by a good man, it means just infinitely more as used by God. April 7th If ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you your trespasses. These words are kindness indeed. April 8th God holds the unforgiving man with his hand, but turns his face away from him. April 9th It may be infinitely less evil to murder a man than to refuse to forgive him, and as far as we can quench the relations of life between us, we shut out God, the life, the one. April 10th what man can judge his neighbor aright, save him who love makes him refuse to judge him? Therefore we are told to love and not to judge. April 11th To be content is not to be satisfied. No one ought to be satisfied with the imperfect. April 12th the way to worship God while daylight lasts is to work. The service of God, the only divine service, is the helping of our fellows. April 13th We are and we remain such creeping Christians because we look at ourselves and not at Christ. April 14th God does not, by the instant gift of his Spirit, make us always feel right, desire good, love purity, aspire after him and his will. April 15th Should the twilight darken into night and sorrow grow to anguish, be thou strong. Thou art in God, and nothing can go wrong which a fresh life pulse cannot set aright. April 16th Each of us has within him a secret of the divinity. Each is growing toward the revelation of that secret to himself, and so to the full reception according to his measure of the divine. April 17th we do not half appreciate the benefits to the race that spring from honest dullness. April 18th A man must not choose his neighbor. He must take the neighbor that God sends him. Your neighbor is just the man who is next to you at the moment. April 19th we shall find one day that beauty and riches were the best things for those to whom they were given, as deformity and poverty were the best for others. April 20th There are those who in their first seeking of it are nearer to the kingdom than many who have for years believed themselves of it. The Lord says, Judge not. Didst thou judge thy neighbor yesterday? Wilt thou judge him again tomorrow? April 22nd It is strange to see how even noble women with the divine gift of imagination may be argued into unbelief in their best instincts by some small man as commonplace as clever who beside them is as limestone to marble. April 23rd Whatever God does must be right, but are we sure that we know what he does? That which men say he does may be very wrong indeed. April 24th So long as we hang back from doing what conscience urges, there is no peace for us. April 25th 
The Lord says, Love your enemies. Sayest thou, It is impossible. Thou sayest true, I doubt not. But hast thou tried whether he who made will not increase the strength put forth to obey him? April 26th Go to him who says, in the might of his eternal tenderness and his human pity, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. April 27th a strange longing after something he knew not nor could name awoke within him. This feeling was never stilled. The desire never left him, sometimes growing even to a passion that was relieved only by a flood of tears. April 28th Little did Robert think that his soul was searching after one whose form was constantly presented to him but as constantly obscured and made unlovely by the words without knowledge spoken in the religious assemblies of the land. April 29th The will of God can never be other than good, but I doubt if any man can ever be sure that a thing is the will of God, save by seeing into its nature and character and beholding its goodness. April 30th It is one thing, and a good thing, to do for God's sake that which is not his will. It is another thing, and altogether a better thing, to do for God's sake that which is his will. End of section 2 Read by Shelley Weingart, March 2024 Wareham, Massachusetts. Section 3 of Beautiful Thoughts from George MacDonald. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Beautiful Thoughts by George MacDonald and Elizabeth W. Dougal. Section 3. May and June. May. May 1st. Turn thee, and to thy work let God alone, and wait for him, faint or the waves will come, far floating whispers from the other shore. To thine averted ears do thou thy work, and thou shalt follow, follow and find thine own. May 2nd. Count not that labor an evil which helps to bring out the best elements of human nature. May 3rd. Finding how the unbelief of the best of the poor is occasioned by hopelessness in privation and the sufferings of those dear to them, he was confident that only the personal communion of friendship could make it possible for them to believe in God. May 4th You must not imagine that the result depends on you or that a single human soul can be lost because you may fail. May 5th God can use us as tools, but to be a tool of is not to be a fellow worker with. May 6th. Repentance does not mean sorrow. It means turning away from the sin. May 7th. The mist was now far enough off to be seen and thought about. It was clouds now, no longer mist and rain. And I thought how, at length, the evils of the world would float away, and we should see what it was that made it so hard for us to believe and be at peace. May 8th. It is true no one can by an effort of the will care for this or that, but where a man cares for nothing that is worth caring for, the fault must lie not in the nature God made, but in the character the man himself has made and is making. May 9th. 
When men face a duty, not merely will that duty become at once less unpleasant to them, but life itself will immediately begin to gather interest. May 10th Thousands that are capable of great sacrifices are yet not capable of the little ones which are all that are required of them. May 11th A multitude of successive small sacrifices may work more good in the world than many a large one. May 12th The cry of the human heart in all ages and in every moment is, Where is God and how shall I find Him? May 13th Those who would do good to the poor must attempt it in the way in which best they could do good to people of their own standing. May 14th Women are being constantly misled by the fancy and hope of being the saviors of men. It is natural to goodness and innocence, but not the less is the error a disastrous one. May 15th Christians must be in the world as he was in the world, and in proportion to the truth radiated from them, the world would be able to believe in him. May 16th Who shall say when God can do no more? God, who takes no care of himself and is laboriously working to get his children home. May 17th our fate is in our own hands. It is ours to determine the direction in which we shall go. May 18th The foolish child thinks there can be nothing where he sees nothing. The human heart feels as if where it cannot devise help, there is none possible to God. But as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways higher than our ways, and his thoughts than our thoughts. May 19th If God cannot save a man by all his good gifts, not even by the gift of a woman offered to his higher nature, but by that refused, the woman's giving of herself to his lower nature can only make him the more unredeemable. May 20th Nothing worth calling good can or ever will be started full-grown. May 21st There is no true power but that which has individual roots. May 22nd We are always disbelieving in God because things do not go as we intend and desire them to go. May 23rd Contempt is murder committed by the intellect, as hatred is murder committed by the heart. May 24th Would it be any kindness not to punish sin, not to use all means to put away the evil thing from us? May 25th God is nearer to you than any thought or feeling of yours. May 26th If I felt my heart as hard as a stone, if I did not love God or man or woman or little child, I would yet say to God in my heart, O God, see how I trust thee because thou art perfect and not changeable like me. I do not love thee. I am not even sorry for it. Thou seest how much I need thee to come close to me, to put thy arm around me, to say to me, my child, for the worse my state, the greater my need. May 27th Everything is possible, but without labor and failure, nothing is achievable. May 28th it is a happy thing for us that this is really all we have to concern ourselves about what to do next. May 29th 
we are perhaps too much in the habit of thinking of death as the culmination of disease, which regarded only in itself is an evil and a terrible evil, but I think rather of death as the first pulse of the new strength shaking itself free from the old, moldy remnants of earth garments, that it may begin in freedom the new life that grows out of the old. May 30th Some natures will endure a great amount of misery before they feel compelled to look there for help whence all help and healing comes. May 31st Never anyone tried to be better without, for a time, seeming to himself, perhaps to others, to be worse. June June 1st Do with us what thou wilt, all glorious heart, Thou God of them that are not yet but grow, we trust thee for the thing we shall be yet. We too are ill content with what we are. June 2nd The kingdom of heaven is not come even when God's will is our law. It is come when God's will is our will. June 3rd The more we love God, the more we love each other. June 4th God is your Father, whether you wish it or not. June 5th God knows how things look to us, both far off and near. What they look to Him is what they are. We cannot see them so, but we see them as He meant us to see them therefore truly according to the measure of the created. June 6th No one can ever save his soul. God only can do that. June 7th To have what we want is riches, but to be able to do without is power. June 8th That man has begun to be strong who has begun to know that separated from life essential, that is God, he is weakness itself, but of strength inexhaustible if he be one with his origin. June 9th Happy she who as her son is going down behind the western is herself ascending the eastern hill returning through old age to the second and better childhood, which shall not be taken away. June 10th On the far horizon, heaven and earth seemed to meet as old friends, who, though never parted, were yet in the continual act of renewing their friendship. June 11th The earth, like the angels, was rejoicing if not over a sinner that had repented, yet over a man that had passed from a lower into a higher condition of life, out of its earth into its air. June twelfth, To make things real to us is the end and battle cause of life. June thirteenth, We often think we believe what we are only presenting to our imaginations. The least thing can overthrow that kind of faith. June 14th You cannot leave thoughts as you do books. Those you love only come nearer to you when you go away from them. June 15th Faith in its simplest, truest, mightiest form is to do his will in the one thing revealing itself at the moment as duty. June 16th God lets men have their playthings, like the children they are, that they may learn to distinguish them from true possessions. June 17th Enduring evil without returning evil was the Savior's way. 
I fancy there would be more Christians and of a better stamp in the world if that had been the mode of resistance always adopted. June 18th A man who is able to look down and see that part of him capable of disappointment lying beneath him is far more blessed than he who rejoices in the fulfillment of his desires. June 19th Only where God is, is no emptiness. June 20th Religion is simply the way home to the Father. June 21st Obedience is the road to all things. It is the only way to grow able to trust Him. June 22nd The gospel is not given to redeem our understandings, but our hearts. That done, and only then, our understandings will be free. June 23rd Poor unbelieving birds of God, we hover about a whole wood of the trees of life venturing a peck here and there as if their fruit might be poison and the design of our Creator was our ruin. June 24th God finds it very hard to teach us, but He is never tired of trying. June 25th Love and faith and obedience are sides of the same prism. June 26th Nothing but Christ himself for your very own teacher and friend and brother. Not all the doctrines about him, even if every one of them were true, can save you. June 27th It is out of the storm alone that true peace comes. June 28th one ought not to be miserable about another as if God had forgotten him. Only pray and be ready. June 29th Do you think Jesus came to deliver us from the punishment of our sins? The terrible thing is to be bad and all punishment is to help deliver us from it. Nor will it cease until we have given up being bad. June 30th To the loving soul alone does the Father reveal himself, for love alone can understand him. End of section 3 Read by Shelley Weingart March 2024 Wareham, Massachusetts Section 4 of Beautiful Thoughts from George MacDonald. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Beautiful Thoughts by George MacDonald and Elizabeth W. Dougal. Section 4 July and August. July. July 1st. Come to me, come to me, O my God, come to me everywhere. Let the trees mean thee, and the grassy sod, and the water, and the air. For thou art so far that I often doubt, as on every side I stare, searching within and looking without, if thou art anywhere. July 2nd God's mercy is infinite. And the doctrine of adoption is one of the falsest of all doctrines invented by the so-called church, and used by yet less loving teachers to oppress with all the souls of God's true children, and scare them from their father's arms. July 3rd It will be something better and better, lovelier and lovelier, that Christ will teach you, only you must leave human teachers altogether and give yourself to him to be taught. July 4th If we do not trust God and will not work with him, 
but are always thwarting him in his endeavors to make us alive, then we must be miserable. There is no help for it. July 5th The thing that God loves is the only lovely thing, and he who does it does well, and is on the way to discover that he does it very badly. July 6th the doing of things from duty is but a stage on the road to the kingdom of truth and love. July 7th To hold fast upon God with one hand and open wide the other to your neighbor, that is religion, and the true way to all better things that are yet to come. July 8th It is those who are unaware of their proclivities and never pray against them, that must be led into temptation, lest they should forever continue capable of evil. July 9th I cannot help thinking, if I could get my head and heart into the kingdom of heaven, I should find that everything else would come right. I believe it is God himself I want. Nothing will do but himself in me. July 10th. When you are good, then you will know why he did not make you good at first, and will be perfectly satisfied with the reason, because you will find it good and just and right, so good that it was altogether beyond the understanding of one who is not good. July 11th. Peace is for those who do the truth, not for those who opine it. July 12th. To know God is to be in the secret place of all knowledge. July 13th. To wait for God, believing it his one design to redeem his creatures, ready to put to the hand the moment his hour strikes, is faith fit for a fellow worker with him. July 14th. When I look like this into the blue sky, it seems so deep, so peaceful, so full of a mysterious tenderness, that I could lie for centuries and wait for the dawning of the face of God out of the awful loving kindness. July 15th. It is for the revelation of God to all human souls that they may be saved by knowing him, and so becoming like him, that a child is chosen to set before them in the Gospels. July 16th. Reality, however lapped in vanity, or even in falsehood, cannot lose its power. July 17th. Forgiveness is love towards the unlovely. July 18th. To help the growth of a thought that struggles toward the light, to brush with gentle hand the earth stain from the white of the snowdrop, such be my ambition. July 19th. People talk about special providences. I believe in the providences, but not the specialty. I do not think that God lets the thread of my affairs go for six days, and on the seventh evening takes it up for a moment. July 20th Until we love the Lord so as to do what he tells us, we have no right to have an opinion about what the disciples meant, for all they wrote is about things beyond us. July 21st. My God, I thank thee, thou dost care for me. I am content, rejoicing to go on, even when my home seems very far away, for over grief and aching emptiness and fading hopes a higher joy arises. July 22nd. To succeed in the wrong is the most dreadful punishment to a man who in the main is honest. July 23rd. 
If I had my way, I would never argue at all. I would spend my energy in setting forth what I believe, and so leave it to work its own way. July 24th Surely if God has made us to desire the truth, He has got some truth to cast into the gulf of that desire. July 25th Love is one, and love is changeless. July 26th I do not think that the road to contentment lies in despising what we have not got. Let us acknowledge all good, and be content without it. July 27th The world will never be right till the mind of God is the measure of things, and the will of God is the law of things. July 28th Remember, the truth depends not on your seeing it. July 29th Show me the person ready to step from any, let it be the narrowest sect of Christian Pharisees, into a freer and holier air, and I will look to find in that person the one of that sect who in the midst of its darkness and selfish worldliness has been living a life more obedient than the rest. July 30th In giving we receive more than we give, and the more is in proportion to the worth of the thing given. July 31st Well do I know not one human being ought, even were it possible, to be enough for himself. Each of us needs God, and every human soul he has made, before he has enough. But we ought each to be able, in the hope of what is one day to come, to endure, for a time, not having enough. August August 1st We believe, nay, Lord, we only hope, that one day we shall thank Thee perfectly, for pain and hope, and all that led or drove us back into the bosom of thy love. August 2nd Our strength ought to go into conduct, not into talk, least of all into talk about what they call the doctrine of the gospel. August 3rd If the world is God's, every true man ought to feel at home in it, August 4th. Something is wrong if the calm of the summer night does not sink into the heart, for the peace of God is there embodied. August 5th. As the light fills the earth, so God fills what we call life. August 6th. To do what we ought is an altogether higher, diviner, more potent, more creative thing than to write the grandest poem, paint the most beautiful picture, carve the mightiest statue, or dream out the most enchanting commotion of melody and harmony. August 7th A Christian is just one that does what the Lord Jesus tells him. Neither more nor less than that makes a Christian. August 8th The Lord has not forsaken his people because the young ones do not think just as the old ones choose. The Lord has something fresh to tell them and is getting them ready to receive his message. August 9th On the borders of her playfulness, there seemed ever to hang a fringe of thoughtfulness, as if she felt that the present moment owed all its sparkle and brilliance to the eternal sunlight. God was good to her and to us in her. August 10th Everything God gives you to do, you must do as well as you can, and that is the best possible preparation for what He may want you to do next. August 11th. 
It was one of the lessons of our Lord's life that knowledge and power are not on a level with goodness. August 12th We cannot see the truth in common things, the will of God in little everyday affairs, and that is how they become so irksome to us. August 13th The lowest work which God gives a man to do must be in its nature noble, as certainly noble as the highest. August 14th Life is God's school, and they who will listen to the Master there will learn at God's speed. August 15th Something is wrong in the man to whom the sunrise is not a divine glory, for therein are embodied the truth, the simplicity, the might of the Maker. August 18th Let no one who wants to do anything for the soul of a man lose a chance of doing something for his body. August 17th God is the only home of the human soul. August 18th A real duty is always something right in itself. The duty a man makes his for the time, by supposing it to be a duty, may be something quite wrong in itself. August 19th Believe in the will that with a thought can turn the shadow of death into the morning. Give gladness for weeping, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. August 20th It is a good thing to desire to share a good thing, but it is not well to be unable alone to enjoy a good thing. It is our enjoyment that should make us desire to share. To enjoy alone is to be able to share. August 21st Respect and graciousness from each to each is the very essence of Christianity, independent of rank or possession or relation. August 22nd The man who would spare due suffering is not wise. Because a thing is unpleasant, it is folly to conclude it ought not to be. There are creations to be perfected, sinners to be redeemed through the ministry of pain. August 23rd Mercy sometimes wished she were good, but there are thousands of wandering ghosts who would be good if they might, without taking trouble, the kind of goodness they desire would not be worth a life to hold it. August 24th Instead of God's truth, they offer man's theory and accuse of rebellion against God, such as cannot live on the husks they call food. August 25th He speaks against God who says he does things that are not good. It does not make a thing good to call it good. August 26th The justice of God is the love of what is right and the doing of what is right. Eternal misery in the name of justice could satisfy none but a demon whose bad laws had been broken. August 27th how did they find thee in days of old? How did they grow so sure? They fought in thy name, they were glad and bold. They suffered and kept themselves pure. August 28th When will we understand that it is neither thought nor talk, neither sorrow for sin nor love of holiness that is required of us, but obedience? To be and to obey are one. August 29th I know that all the strangest things in life and history must one day come together in a beautiful face of loving purpose. 
one of the faces of the living God. August 30th Our dependence is our eternity. We cannot live on bread alone. We need every word of God. August 31st God cannot by searching be found out, yet is ever before us. The one we can best know, the one we cannot help knowing. For his end in giving us being is that his humblest creature should at length possess himself and be possessed by him. End of section 4 Read by Shelley Weingart, March 2024, Wareham, Massachusetts Section 5 of Beautiful Thoughts from George MacDonald. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Beautiful Thoughts by George MacDonald and Elizabeth W. Dougal. Section 5 September and October. September. September 1st. Defeat thou knowest not, canst not know. Tis that thy aims so lofty go. They need as long to root and grow as infant hills to reach the snow. September 2nd. God will not take you away if it be better for you to live here longer, but you will have to go sometime. And if you contrive to live after God wanted you to go, you would find yourself much less ready when the time came that you must go. September 3rd God is the one perfect individual, and while this world is his and that world is his, there can be no inconsistency, no violent difference between there and here. September 4th. All is man's only because it is God's. September 5th. The only way to get at what is right is to do what seems right. Even if we mistake, there is no other way. September 6th. Evil that is not seen to be evil by one willing and trying to do right is not counted evil to him. It is evil only to the person who either knows it to be evil or who does not care whether it be or not. September 7th The philosopher is he who lives in the thought of things. The Christian is he who lives in the things themselves. September 8th I thought that if I could get them to like poetry and beautiful things in words, it would not only do them good, but would help them to see what is in the Bible and therefore love it more. September 9th It is in our own thoughts and our own actions that we have first to stand up for the right. Our business is not to protect ourselves from the neighbor's wrong, but our neighbor from our wrong. This is to slay evil. The other is to make it multiply. September 10th. Things are ours that we may use them for all, sometimes that we may sacrifice them. God had but one precious thing, and he gave that. September 11th. There is no forgetting ourselves, but in the finding of our deeper, our truer self, the Christ in us. September 12th. Religion is neither the food nor the medicine of being. It is the life essential. September 13th. Depend upon it. We get our best use of life in learning by the fact of its ebb and flow to understand the Son of Man. September 14th 
Praise be the grandeur of the God who can endure to make and see his children suffer. September 15th Thanks be to him for his north winds and his poverty and his bitterness that falls upon the spirit that errs. Let those who know him thus praise the Lord for his goodness. September 16th By life I mean being. If there is no God, I dare not kill myself, said Malcolm, lest worse should be waiting me in the awful voids beyond. If there be a God, living or dying is all one, so it be what he pleases. September 17th Some people are content not to do mean actions. I want to become incapable of a mean thought or feeling. September 18th As we grow ready for true nobility, somewhere or other, we will find what is needful for us in a book or a friend, or best of all, in our own thoughts the eternal thought speaking in our thoughts. September 19th There is no strength in unbelief. Even the unbelief of what is false is no source of might. It is the truth shining from behind that gives the strength to disbelieve. September 20th God may be good, although to you his government may seem to deny it. September 21st It is the nobler thing to seek God in the days of gladness, to look up to him in trustful bliss when the sun is shining. But if a man be miserable, if the storm is coming down on him, what is he to do? There is nothing mean in seeking God then though it would have been nobler to seek him before. September 22nd If you have ever seen the Lord, if only from afar, if you have any vaguest suspicion that Jesus was a better man than other men, one of your first duties must be to open your ears to his words and see whether they commend themselves to you as true. Then, if they do, to obey them with your whole strength and might. September 23rd When we understand him, then only do we understand our life and ourselves. September 24th The only and greatest thing man is capable of is trust in God. September 25th. The true in even the lowest kind is of the truth, and to be compelled to feel that is to be driven a trifle nearer to the truth of being, of creation, of God. September 26th. Every truth has its own danger or shadow. September 27th. I imagine that to him that has overcome the world, in very virtue of his victory, it will show itself the lovely and pure thing it was created, for he will see through the cloudy envelope of his battle to the living kernel below. September 28th What a joy to know that, of all things and all thoughts, God is nearest to us, so near that we cannot see him, but far beyond seeing him can know of him infinitely. September 29th God alone can tell what delights it is possible for him to give to the pure in heart, who shall one day behold him. September 30th the true possession of anything is to see and feel in it what God made it for, and the uplifting of the soul by that knowledge is the joy of true having. October October 1st 
nor seek thou to revive the summer time when roses were alive do thy work be willing to be old thy sorrow is the husk that doth enfold a gorgeous june for which thou needst not strive october second the world might be divided into those who let things go and those who do not into the forces and facts the slaves and fancies those who are always doing something on god's creative lines and those that are always grumbling and striving against them october third real union must ever be in proportion to mutual truthfulness october fourth to miss is the preparation for receiving october fifth one incapable of drudgery cannot be capable of the finest work october sixth the idea that our standing is determined by our knowledge of what is or is not the thing is one of the degrading influences of modern times october seventh i thought within myself that if there were a god he certainly knew that i would give myself to him if i could that if i knew jesus to be really his son however it might seem strange to believe in him and hard to obey him i would try to do so then a verse about the smoking flax and the bruised reed came into my head and a great hope arose in me october eighth god shows us the good and the bad urges us to be good makes good thoughts and good desires in us but we must yield we must turn to him we must consent to be made good october ninth the more anxious he was to come near to god the more he felt that the high road to god lay through the forest of humanity october tenth it is in the individual soul that the spirit works and out of which he sends forth fresh influences october eleventh good women in their supposed ignorance of men's wickedness are not unfrequently like the angels in that they understand it perfectly without the knowledge soiling one feather of their wings october twelfth until we begin to learn that the only way to serve god in any real sense of the word is to serve our neighbor we may have knocked at the wicket gate but i doubt if we have got one foot across the threshold of the kingdom october thirteenth all the doors that lead inward to the secret place of the most high are doors outwards out of self out of smallness out of wrong october fourteenth it is not the high summer alone that is god's the winter also is his all man's winters are his the winter of our poverty the winter of our sorrow even the winter of our discontent october fifteenth we cannot live on air alone we need an atmosphere of living souls october sixteenth the love of god is the source of all joy and of all good things and this love is present in the child jesus october seventeenth i fancy the most indispensable thing to a life is that it should be interesting to those who have it to live october eighteenth the wind-tossed anemone is a word of god as real and true as the unbending oak beneath which it grows october nineteenth 
perhaps the highest moral height which a man can reach, and at the same time the most difficult of attainment, is the willingness to be nothing. October 20th We can behold and understand God in the least degree as well as in the greatest, only by the God-like within us. And he that loves thus the good and great has no room, no thought, no necessity for comparison and difference. October 21st Sunshine is not gladness, because you see him not. The stars are far away, because he is not near. October 22nd the heart within you cries out for something, and you let it cry. It is crying for its God, for its father and mother and home. And the day will come when all the world will look dull and gray till your heart is satisfied and quieted with the presence of him in whom we live, move, and have our being. October 23rd I believe that the grand, noble way of thinking of God and His will must be the true way, though it never can be grand or noble enough, and that belief in beauty and truth is essential to a right understanding of the world. October 24th Sorrow herself will reveal one day that she was only the beneficent shadow of joy. October 25th. When we love truly, all oppression of past sin will be swept away. October 26th. Love is the final atonement on which and for which the sacrifice of the atonement was made. Until this atonement is made in every man, sin holds its own and God is not all in all. October 27th The goal of all life is the face of God. October 28th She had a strong instinctive feeling that she was in the world to do something, and she saw that if nobody tried to keep things right, they would go terribly wrong. If she could do nothing with the big things, she must be the busier with the little things. October 29th Perhaps she had to learn a yet higher lesson, that our one free home is the heart, the eternal, lovely will of God, than that which should fail. It would be better that we should go out in blackness. But this will is our salvation. Because he liveth, we shall live also. October 30th. Is it true that all our experiences will one day revive in entire clearness of outline and full brilliancy of color, passing before the horror-struck soul to the denial of time and the assertion of ever-present eternity? If so, then God be with us, for we shall need him. October 31st. The Spirit of God lies all about the spirit of man, like a mighty sea, ready to rush in at the smallest chink in the walls that shut him out from his own. End of section 5. Read by Shelley Weingart. March 2024. Wareham, Massachusetts. Section 6 of Beautiful Thoughts from George MacDonald. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Beautiful Thoughts by George MacDonald and Elizabeth W. Dougal. Section 6, November and December. November. November 1st. Better a death when work is done than earth's most favored birth.
better a child in God's great house than the king of all the earth. November 2nd That which is best he gives most plentifully, as is reason with him. Hence the quiet fullness of ordinary nature, hence the spirit to them that ask it. November 3rd And then I thought of the wind that bloweth where it listeth, which is everywhere, and I thanked God for the life of life, whose story and whose words are in that best of books. November 4th If we do evil that good may come, the good we looked for will never come thereby. But once evil is done, we may humbly look to him who bringeth good out of evil, and wait. November 5th Only as we do our duty will light go up in our hearts, making us wise to understand the precious words of our Lord. November 6th What we all need is just to become little children like him, to cease to be careful about many things, and trust in him, seeking only that he should rule and that we should be made good like him. November 7th We profess to think Jesus the grandest and most glorious of men, and yet hardly care to be like him, and so when we are offered his spirit for the asking, we will hardly take the trouble to ask for it. November 8th The philosopher occupies himself with what God may intend, the Christian with what God may want him to do. November 9th It is a joy to think that he will not give you a stone, even if you should take it for a loaf and ask for it as such. November 10th when people do not understand what the Lord says, when it seems to them that his advice is impracticable, instead of searching deeper for a meaning which will be evidently true and wise, they comfort themselves by thinking he could not have meant it altogether, and so leave it. November 11th Let us seek to find out what our Lord means that we may do it, trying and failing and trying again, verily to be victorious at last, what matter when so long as we are trying and so coming nearer to our end? November 12th To serve is the highest, noblest calling in creation, for even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. November 13th Father, we need thy winter as thy spring, and thy poor children, knowing thy great heart, will cease to vex thee with our peevish cries, will lift our eyes and smile, though sorrowful, yet not the less pray for thy help when pain is overstrong. November 14th it has been well said that no man ever sank under the burden of the day. It is when tomorrow's burden is added to the burden of today that the weight is more than a man can bear. November 15th One of the highest benefits we can reap from understanding the way of God with ourselves is that we become able thus to trust him for others with whom we do not understand his ways. November 16th The poorest success, provided the attempt has been genuine, will enable one to enter into any art ten times better than before. November 17th I think the rest in heaven, as here, will be the presence of God, and if we have him with us, the beautiful itself will be, if not quiet, yet as full of peace as the night of stars. November 18th 
Humble ministrations to your neighbor will help you to that perfect love of God which casteth out fear. November 19th Nothing but the love of God that God revealed in Christ will make you able to love your neighbor aright. November 20th One of the great battles that we have to fight in this world for twenty great battles have to be fought, all at once and in one, is the battle with appearances. November 21st Contempt is one of the lowest spiritual conditions in which any being can place himself. Our Lord says, Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones, for their angels do always behold the face of my Father who is in heaven. November 22nd In thinking lovingly about others, we think healthily about ourselves. November 23rd There is one who bringeth light out of darkness, joy out of sorrow, humility out of wrong. November 24th When our duty looks like an enemy dragging us into the dark mountains, we have no less to go with it than when, like a friend with loving face, it offers to lead him along green pastures by the riverside. November 25th It is a fine thing in friendship to know when to be silent. November 26th Action is more powerful than speech in the inclination of religion. November 27th Some spirit must move in that wind that haunts us with a kind of human sorrow. November 28th Thou too hast such a chamber, quietest place, where God is waiting for thee. What is it that will not let thee enter? November 29th In the cold, desolate garret he knew and cried out unto that which lay beyond the thought that cried, the unknowable, infinite, after the God who may be found as surely as a little child knows his mysterious mother. November 30th God cannot be more your father than he is. You may be more his child than you are, but not more than he meant you to be, nor more than he made you for. December December 1st But he said that they who did his work, the truth of it, should know. I will try to do it, if he be Lord, perhaps the old spring will flow. Perhaps the old spirit wind will blow, that he promised to their prayers. And doing thy will, I yet shall know thee, Father, everywhere. December 2nd The winter restrains that the summer may have the beautiful time to do its work well, for the winter is but the sleep of summer. December 3rd Shall life itself be less beautiful than one of its days? Do not believe it. Men call the shadow thrown upon the universe, where their own dusky souls come between it and the eternal sun, life, and then mourn that it should be less bright than the hopes of their childhood. December 4th All good is of God. If a man love his brother whom he hath seen, the love of God whom he hath not seen is not very far off. December 5th Unto every one whom God hath sent into the world, he hath given a work to do in that world. December 6th Whatever may be meant by the place of misery, depend upon it. It is only another form of love, love shining through the fogs of ill, and so made to look something very different. 
December 7th The simplest woman who tries not to judge her neighbor will better know what is best to know than the best read bishop without that one simple outgoing of his highest nature in the effort to do the will of him who thus spoke. December 8th The one grand thing in humanity is faith in God. The highest in God, his truth, his goodness, his righteousness. December 9th As far as my experience guides me, I am bound to believe that there is a spot of soil in every heart sufficient for the growth of a gospel seed. December 10th Aspiration and obedience are the two mightiest forces for development. December 11th If nothing can my heart be sure except the highest best, when God I see with vision pure, that sight will be my rest. December 12th the true way is difficult enough because of our unchildlikeness, but there is a fresh life with every surmounted height, a purer air gained, more life for more climbing. December 13th A quiet heart, submissive, meek, Father, do thou bestow, which more than granted will not seek to have or give or know. December 14th The winter is the childhood of the year. Into this childhood of the year came the child Jesus, and into this childhood of the year must we all descend. December 15th When the human soul is not yet able to receive the vision of the God-man, God sometimes, might I not say always, reveals himself, or at least gives himself in some human being whose face, whose hands, are the ministering angels of his unacknowledged presence, to keep alive the fire of love on the altar of the heart, until God hath provided the sacrifice, that is, until the soul is strong enough to draw it from the concealing thicket. December 16th It is not good that a man should batter day and night at the gate of heaven. Sometimes he can do nothing else, and then nothing else is worth doing, but the very noise of the siege will sometimes drown the still small voice that calls from the open postern. December 17th no human being has ever been allowed to occupy the position of a pure benefactor. The receiver has his turn and becomes the giver. December 18th Think not about thy sin, so as to make it either less or greater in thine own eyes. Bring it to Jesus, and leave it to him to judge thee. December 19th our Lord taught us to pray always and not get tired of it. God, however poor creatures we may be, would have us talk to him, for then he can speak to us better than when we turn no face to him. December 20th God gives us every sort of opportunity for trusting him. December 21st Come home, hungry soul. Thy God is not like the elder brother of the parable, but a God high above all thy longing, even as the heavens are above the earth. December 22nd Who dwelleth in that secret place where tumult enters not is never cold with terror base, never with anger hot. For if an evil host should dare his very heart invest, God is his deeper heart, and there he enters into rest. December 23rd 
the very mother of the lord did not for a long time understand him and only through sorrow came to see true glory december twenty fourth a body cannot rise to the height of grace all at once nor yet in ten or twenty years maybe if i do right i may be able to come to that ere all be done december twenty fifth in the name of the holy child jesus i call upon you this christmas day to cast care to the winds and trust in god to remember that the one gift promised without reserve to those that ask it is the gift of the holy spirit the spirit of the child jesus who will take of the things of jesus and make you understand them december twenty sixth there can be no true labor done save in as far as we are fellow laborers with god we must work with him not against him december twenty seventh if we could thoroughly understand anything, that would be enough to prove it undivine, and that which is but one step beyond our understanding must be, in some of its relations, as mysterious as if it were a hundred. December 28th What is a man to do for the poor? How is he to work with God? He must be a man amongst them, a man breathing the air of a higher life and therefore, in all natural ways, fulfilling his endless human relations to them. December 29th Of one thing I am pretty sure. The same recipe Goethe gave for the enjoyment of life applies equally to all work. Do the thing that lies next to you. That is all your business. December 30th Whatever you do for the needy, let your own being, that is, you in relation to them, be the background, that so you may be a link between them and God, or rather, I should say, between them and a knowledge of God. December 31st Thou goest thine, and I go mine. Many ways we wend, many days and many ways, ending in one end. Many a wrong and its curing song, many a road and many an inn, room to room but only one home for all the world to win. End of section 6 End of Beautiful Thoughts from George MacDonald by George MacDonald and Elizabeth W. Dougal Read by Shelley Weingart, March 2024, Wareham, Massachusetts